uh, it's playing out exactly as I intended or as I anticipated. And no surprise, because DASIC is outside of the government. The government, U.S. government has got a real problem, as does the CCP. The CCP and the U.S. government were the prime movers here in engineering this. And all the evidence points to the proposal that DASIC had written and submitted to DARPA proposed the engineering of a virus. And this SARS-CoV-2 sequence uh, has the hallmarks of exactly the type of engineering that he proposed to do together with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. So uh, we're in a situation, you, you can see forward on this, Alex. Uh, what would happen if there was an acknowledgement that the United States government funded research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology that uh, proceeded together with uh, EcoHealth Alliance to engineer a virus that spread all over the world like this. The civil and criminal liability would be enormous. The political consequences would be enormous. Uh, and so th what we're gonna see is continued efforts on the part of the US government, the European Union, uh, the WHO, etc., to deny what is increasingly obvious. But uh, I think that this, uh, to its credit, this select committee is really pretty pissed off right now if you listen to the testimony and the amazing thing to me was how bipartisan that was both sides of the aisle are looking to really hold mr dazic dr dazic accountable for his actions so i i think that we're gonna get some traction on accountability for the origin of the virus but so far, absolutely no accountability about the manipulation of data, withholding of data from, by the CDC, withholding of informed consent and key information from the general populace about the adverse events associated with the vaccine. I don't see how the U.S. government comes clean on what they have done here in preventing uh, the citizens of the United States from having uh, informed consent concerning the risks associated with these vaccines. And Imagine a government creating a pandemic coordinated by levels of military, medical, media, and societal corporate coordination. Genocide has, is being covered up. Research of highly virulent pathogens is very much regulated and stated by the State Department and other agencies to not be operable for danger of the obvious, yet somehow all the red lines and tape were broken. How can this be allowed to happen? Yes, the worst happened. Millions died because of the operations to mutate bad viruses and mutate them to become human virulent. Since this research was almost forbidden in the US, Obama, Fauci, and Daszak moved the project to where no rules apply, only the benefits of the Chinese regime. Injustice in the 21st century, gain-of-function research and mutant-creating pathogens. 15 U.S. agencies knew China was creating COVID-like viruses in 2020-2018. How EcoHealth Alliance and the Wuhan Institute of Virology collaborated on a dangerous background virus project. Insanity. If a government and corporations can guide our medical national institute of health and conduct mutated gain of function virus from creation of pandemic, how horrible, if intentional, that they created this in an organized manner at, a, at like a conspiracy. Came in the open tank, gave me the collie wobbles. Still does. That's close enough, Inspector. We're not wired. 
I'm sorry, but a man in my position survives by taking every precaution. You have information for us? No, you already have the information. All the names and dates are inside your head. What you want, what you really need, is a story. A story can be true or false. I leave such judgments to you, Inspector. Our story begins, as these stories often do, with a young up-and-coming politician. He's a deeply religious man and a member of the Conservative Party. He's completely single-minded and has no regard for the political process. The more power he attains, the more obvious his zealotry, and the more aggressive his supporters become. Eventually, his party launches a special project in the name of national security. At first, it's believed to be a search for biological weapons, and it's pursued without regard to its cost. However, the true goal of this project is power, complete and total hegemonic domination. The project, however, ends violently. But the efforts of those involved are not in vain, for a new ability to wage war is born from the blood of one of the victims. Imagine a virus, the most terrifying virus you can, and then imagine that you and you alone have the cure. But if your ultimate goal is power, how best to use such a weapon? It's at this point in our story that along comes a spider. He is a man seemingly without a conscience, for whom the ends always justify the means, and it is he who suggests that their target should not be an enemy of the country, but rather the country itself. Three targets are chosen to maximize the effect of the attack, a school, a tube station, and a water treatment plant. Several hundred die within the first few weeks. That Three Waters has, in fact, been contaminated. Authorities are attempting to control its deadly spread. Sent a wave of destruction throughout the underground. Fueled by the media, fear and panic spread quickly, fracturing and dividing the country until at last the true goal comes into view. Before the St. Mary's crisis, no one would have predicted the results of the election that year, no one. And then not long after the election, lo and behold, a miracle. Some believed it was the work of God himself, but it was a pharmaceutical company controlled by certain party members that made them all obscenely rich. A year later, several extremists are tried, found guilty and executed while a memorial is built to canonize their victims. But the end result, the true genius of the plan, was the fear. Fear became the ultimate tool of this government, and through it, our politician was ultimately appointed to the newly created position of High Chancellor. The rest, as they say, is history. Can you prove any of this? Why do you think I'm still alive? All right. We'd like to take you into protective custody, Mr. Rookwood. Oh, I'm sure you would. But if you want that recording, you'll do what I tell you to do. You put Creedy under 24-hour surveillance. When I feel safe that he can't pick his nose without you knowing, I'll contact you again. Till then, cheerio. Rookwood. Why didn't you come forward before? What were you waiting for? Well, for you, Inspector, I needed you. For watching Odyssey Media, this is Nick Odremas. One of the biggest conspiracies and murders, biogenocide, in the 21st century. I'm going to show you every single step-by-step -step creation of this mutant creation of the deep state of the elites of the world and how they managed to use every single entity in the government and public and private to bring about this mutant pseudovirus in Wuhan through EcoHealth and the NIH and the spike proteins of naturally occurring back coronavirus circul circulating in China capable of binding these human ACE2 receptors into these mouse models that were done in the lab laboratory mice infected with that bat virus spike protein then became sicker and that was then the creation of the bioweb and I'm going to show you the grant page by page on how the creation happened in 2014 that led up to the military of the CCP in China taking while that development was going on the military elements that were sitting in the board 
um, already guiding this bioweapon research to the PLA. Um, they were already, the PLA army was already creating these bioweapon uh, programs intentioned for bio warfare. And they used our money, our researchers, our innovation, our brains to attack us without even uh, going to war. So not only was it the tools given to our enemy, and I'm going to show you step by step, this documentation will be put on the description so you can read it yourself, you can verify the evidence step by step. And nobody else is doing this but Odyssey Media and the Kudramas. Please subscribe if you already have not just subscribed. This is critical information. Nobody else is putting step-by-step -step documentation on the creation of the bioweapon. So, only here is where we're bringing it. And, again, those documents can be put in a court of law to show that, indeed, this was a conspiracy through the funding to the tr transmission of these elements to Wuhan, to, given to a military institution not a research institution but a military or order that was already going on by the ccp your taxpayer money funded and murdered over 20 million people and that is not a conspiracy as i'm going to show you right now step by step and nobody else is going as deep and as descriptive in this so please support odyssey media and nicodremus this is the biggest biogenocide and they need to be brought up in charges or else it will happen again they will use these power moves again against humanity again if we don't expose the murderers that are worse than any genocide that has ever happened in history tell me in any genocide in history where more than 20 plus million have been murdered through this through the state and we are in bioweapon warfare 21st century this is the fastest genocide that has ever happened and it's being covered up like it was just a naturally occurring thing these viruses take millions of years hundreds of uh, to 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 evolve thousands of years you're gonna tell me that these specific bat virus that was being researched for 20 plus years at wuhan and the spike protein ace2 receptor binding uh, technology that was stolen from the University of North Carolina through Ralph Bear just coincidentally all merged at the same time no because this 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 virus was even the creator of the HIV uh, said himself not the creator but the, the the like the guy who saw it first the virologist said that this was man-made this is too there's too many evidence of that so i'm going to show you the funding step by step please again support artists media this i know this is a gonna this is a long video but nobody again is putting this out here in in the way in the, in the style that we have so please support enjoy watching october 21 2021 nih admits to funding gain of function research in wuhan says eco health violated reporting requirements a top nih official admitted in a Wednesday letter that the U.S. taxpayers funded gain-of-function research on bat coronaviruses in Wuhan and revealed that EcoHealth Alliance, the U.S. nonprofit that funded NIH money to the Wuhan Institute of Virology, was not transparent about the work it was doing. But is lying here, Senator. It is you. Dr. Fauci, as you are aware, it is a crime to lie to Congress. Section 1001 of the U.S. Criminal Code creates a felony and a five-year penalty for lying to Congress. On your last trip to our committee on May 11th, you stated that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain-of-function research in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And yet, gain-of-function research was done entirely in the Wuhan Institute by Dr. Xi, and was funded by the NIH. I'd like to ask unanimous consent to insert into the record the Wuhan virology paper entitled Discovery of a Rich Gene Pool of Bat SARS-Related Coronaviruses. Please deliver a copy of the journal article to Dr. Fauci. In this paper, Dr. Xi credits the NIH and lists the actual number of the grant that she was given by the NIH. In this paper, she took 
two bat coronavirus genes, spike genes, and combine them with a SARS-related backbone to create new viruses that are not found in nature. These lab-created viruses were then to shown to replicate in humans. These experiments combine genetic information from different coronaviruses that infect animals, but not humans, to create novel artificial viruses able to infect human cells. Viruses that in nature only infect animals were manipulated in the Wuhan lab to gain the function of infecting humans. This research fits the definition of the research that the NIH said was subject to the pause in 2014 to 2017, a pause in funding on gain of function. This pause of gain of function research for the mutation of bat viruses or other viruses that could enhance the mutation and in go into humans was stopped in 2014 and the NIH then started it back up in 2017 under the Barack White House, the demon himself unleashing a virus with China coordinated by the military Chinese right before he leaves office. So the elections and then a bioweapon by the Chinese, a double-handed approach to destruction. This is what they had planned all along. The, this type of research, this gain of function research is, is, is uh, powerful and dangerous to the world. This moratorium was stopped and continued right before he left the office. This is a coordinated effort. It was a coordinated effort to start the mechanisms to start the adoption of these recommendations and requirements for lifting the current moratorium on certain life sciences that could uh, research that could enhance pathogens virulence and transmissibility to produce a potential pandemic pathogen. This was a recommended policy guidance for potential pandemic <laughs> pandemic potential pandemic pathogen care and oversight I mean you have everything being operated and hidden in front of you but the NIH failed to recognize this defines it away and it never came under any scrutiny Dr. Richard E. Bright, a molecular biologist from Rutgers, described this research in Wuhan as, the Wuhan lab used NIH funding to construct novel chimeric SARS-related coronaviruses able to infect human cells and laboratory animals. This is high-risk research that creates new potential pandemic pathogens. Pot Not only did they fund this research in Wuhan, but Prior to Wuhan, this was being taken care of at the UNC University in North Carolina by Ralph Barrick and the spy Xi Jing Li, the Batwoman as I've shown you before. This all began back in 2014. The experiments were too dangerous. Oh my god, so the Obama administration enacted a no appall. Uh, uh, oh yes, yes, of course, but they started it back up because they were leaving. So, the mutations to try and see future viruses, which is total BS, is a total excuse to create bioweapons and transfer it over to an authoritarian communist regime. And, um, you know, what else are you going to have? So, after it was transferred from the University of North Carolina, you see, this is all evidence being shown right in front of everybody u.s taxpayer money it, educational institutions being put to bioweapon research and then being given to our enemy with our taxpayer money then being funded and facilitated to the enemy in the wuhan because remember wuhan was the epicenter of the weapon that is where everything originated from that is where the Institute of Wuhan is University of North Carolina. Remember, Ralph Barrick was the one that created the transmissibility protein, spike protein that takes everything into the human. The goal of these studies described here is to produce virulent mouse models. 
pathogenesis that allows antiviral activity evaluations. So this is talking about how it's going to combine all of the sequence for Ralph Barrick that he has done. And sequence the spike right here. Right here. So the goal of all of this is to create a, a mutated virus from the bat. And they were able to do this in Wuhan, China because of the lack of restrictions in that country. The restrictions in the United States were too strong. That's why the Obama administration had to, pa had to pause it and then unpause it in 2017. So at the same time that this was getting unpaused and moved to Wuhan, I mean, <laughs> you're gonna give it to Jijing Lei, who has been studying bat viruses for 20 years. So you give the component to the Chinese, and then Jijing the Lei has been working with bat viruses for 20 years, and now has the ability to transmit these these, these 20 years bat bat virus to humans. I mean, look at that. This is where it all began. This is nothing but evidence. Potential pandemic pathogens that exist only in the lab, not in nature. This research matches, these are Dr. Ebright's words, this research matches, indeed epitomizes, the definition of gain-of-function research done entirely in Wuhan, for which there was supposed to be a federal pause. Dr. Fauci, knowing that it is a crime to lie to Congress, do you wish to retract your statement of May 11th where you claimed that the NIH never funded gain-of-function research in Wuhan? Ralph Barrick, whose virology techniques were used in Wuhan, testified that lab leak was possible. The UNC coronavirologist who has collaborated on gain-of-function research with the Wuhan Institute of Virology's Shi Li, told congressional investigators that he has long worried about biosafety protocols inside China. Though he thinks it's far more likely COVID-19 originated in nature, he said of a possible laboratory escape, you can't rule that out. By Catherine Eben May 1, 2024. Ralph Barrick, researcher and lab leader at North Carolina's Gillings School of Global Public Health, sits for a photograph in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, U.S., on Friday, February 14, 2020. Illustration by Pamela Wang. Photo by Christopher Gennaro, Bloomberg, Getty Images. Save this story. In 2015, Ralph S. Barrick, arguably the world's most accomplished coronavirologist, published groundbreaking research with Shi Li, the leading coronavirus researcher at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. They had mixed components of different coronaviruses and created an artificial virus, or chimera, that could infect human cells. The research helped crystallize the threat posed by bat coronaviruses lurking in nature. But the experiments were dangerous too. In 2014, while their research was underway, the Obama administration enacted a pause on so-called gain-of-function research that could increase the virulence or transmissibility of certain viruses. Barrick and Shea even flagged the dangers of the research themselves, writing, scientific review panels may deem similar studies too risky to pursue. The experiments were done in Barrick's well-secured laboratory in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Afterward, however, Shea's team at the WIV continued to utilize Barrick's cutting-edge research techniques. Their work was funded in part with a U.S. research grant. Amid competing theories about the origins of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, including whether it could have originated in a Wuhan laboratory, Barrick has become a figure of intense interest. After all, he had pioneered techniques the WIV was using, including one that allows researchers to invisibly splice components of viruses together without leaving a trace. For the last three years, as the COVID-19 origins debate has grown increasingly toxic, a small army of global sleuths and freedom of information petitioners have taken aim at Barrick's emails and research documents, hoping to uncover information about the true genetic engineering capabilities of the WIV scientists, the ongoing research they were pursuing, and the viral genome sequences they had in their possession prior to the pandemic. Advertisement Through it all, Barrick has kept mostly silent, 
until now. On January 22nd, he gave a six-hour interview to investigators from two Republican-led House committees, the Oversight and Accountability Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic and Energy and Commerce's Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations. Though the committees have not yet made his testimony public, Vanity Fair has exclusively reviewed his statements. While not formally under oath, Barrick was required by federal law to answer truthfully. Through a University of North Carolina Chapel Hill spokesperson, Barrick declined to comment for this article. While there is little in the 212-page transcript that is likely to markedly shift the debate on how COVID-19 originated, the picture that emerges is of an American scientist who is deeply wary of his Chinese counterparts and has no way of knowing if or how they may have made use of the groundbreaking research techniques he developed. Most notably, Barrick testified that he had specifically warned Xi Jinping that the WIT's critical coronavirus research was being conducted in labs with insufficient biosafety protections. When he urged her to move the work to a more secure biosafety level 3, BSL, 3, lab, he testified that she did not heed his recommendation. Because the WIV continued to perform coronavirus research at what he considers an inappropriately low biosafety level, Barrick said of a laboratory accident, you can't rule that out. You just can't. In an email turned over to the select subcommittee as part of its investigation, Barrick told Peter Daszak, president of the scientific non-profit EcoHealth Alliance, that it was a load of BS to suggest that the WIV conducted coronavirus research in labs with sufficient biosafety protocols. Barrick told congressional investigators that he believes it's far more likely that SARS-CoV-2 spilled over naturally from animals to humans, given the sheer abundance of viruses in nature. But he also said in his testimony that he disagrees with the most widely promulgated spillover argument that the virus leapt from infected animals to people at the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market, where it first burst into public view in December 2019. The argument does not hold up, he said, because genomic evidence suggests that COVID-19 was already circulating in the human population by mid to late October. Clearly, the market was a conduit for expansion, he testified. Is that where it started? I don't think so. Barrick also weighed in on a controversy that has pitted Dr. Anthony Fauci against Senator Rand Paul, Republican Kentucky, who has leveraged his credentials as an eye doctor to position himself as a crusader against America's scientific and medical establishments. In contentious Senate hearings, Fauci has repeatedly denied Paul's claims that the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, which Fauci led at the time, had funded gain-of-function research at the WIV. However, Barrick told investigators that the experiment in dispute, in which technicians created a chimeric virus that made lab mice sicker, was absolutely gain-of-function research, you can't argue with that. He also said he felt that the experiment's results should have triggered regulatory review. Advertisement the federal grant money for the experiment in question, which was conducted at the WIV sometime between 2018 and 2019, was funneled through EcoHealth Alliance. It was Daszak, EcoHealth's president, who organized an open letter in the Lancet Medical Journal early in the pandemic that helped paint the lab leak hypothesis as a baseless conspiracy theory. Senator Paul, I have never lied before the Congress, and I do not retract that statement. This paper that you are referring to was judged by qualified staff up and down the chain as not being gain of function. So what was, let you me take, finish. You take an animal virus and you increase its yeah. transmissibility to humans, right. you're saying that's not gain of function? Yeah, that is correct. And, and Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about, quite frankly. And I want to say that officially. You do not know what you are talking about. Let's okay, you get NIH. one person. Let's read from the NIH, NIH definition of gain of function. This is your definition that you guys wrote. It says that scientific research that increases the transmissibility among mammals is gain of function. They took animal viruses that only occur in animals and they increase their transmissibility to humans. How you can say that is not gain of function. It is not. It's a dance and you're dancing around this because you're trying to obscure responsibility for 4 million people dying around the world okay. from a pandemic. And let's let send Dr. Fauci. I have respond. to, well, now you're getting into something. If the point that you are making is that the, the, the grant that was funded as a sub-award from EcoHealth to Wuhan 
created SARS-CoV-2. That's where you are getting. Let me finish. We don't know. Well, we don't wait know a minute. If it didn't I come from the lab, but you. all the evidence is pointing that it came from the lab. You, and there will be responsibility for those who funded the right. lab, including yourself. I totally. This committee resent, will allow the witness to. Respond. I totally resent the lie that you are now propagating, Senator, because if you look at the viruses that were used in the experiments, that were given in the annual reports that were published in the literature, it is molecularly impossible. No one's saying those it, viruses it is, caused it. It no is, one is molecularly. Those viruses caused the pandemic. What we're alleging is that gain of function research was going on in that lab and NIH funded it. That is you can't not. Get away from it. It meets your definition and you are obfuscating the truth. I'm not obfuscating the truth. Senator you Paul's are the one. Time is expired, but I will allow the witness to. Let me just finish. I want everyone to understand that if you look at those viruses, and that's judged by qualified virologists and evolutionary biologists. Those viruses are molecularly impossible no one's to result they are. No in SARS-CoV-2. No one's saying those viruses the pandemic. Paul, We're saying they are gain-of-function yeah, viruses because they were they're animal not. viruses that became more transmissible in human, and you funded it. And you, you admit the truth. And you implying... Senator Paul, your time has expired, and I will allow witnesses right. who come before this committee to respond. And, and you are implying that what we did was responsible for the deaths of individual I totally resent and it could that. Have been. And if anybody and it could is have been. lying here, Senator, it is you. It is you. I propose that we end the world, but on our terms, an orchestrated apocalypse, one that will cleanse the earth of its population but leave its infrastructure and resources intact. It's been done once before with great success. The chosen few will ride out the storm, not in an ark as in the book of Genesis, but in safety, underground. And when it's over, we will emerge onto a cleansed earth, one that we can then reboot in our image. And just how do you intend to achieve this? The means of our salvation are already at hand. I give to you the T-Virus. But I was also programmed to value human life. Dr. Isaacs allowed the virus to escape. He murdered over 7 billion people. Dr. Jackson from Texas for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Fauci, I have to say, I, as so many Americans, am deeply disappointed in your actions during a critical time in our nation's history while you were in key leadership roles as the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease and as the chief medical advisor to President Biden. Put quite simply, you failed miserably in my opinion. Based on all we have learned during the pandemic and all that we have since learned through this committee's work, I believe your failures stem from both an effort of self-preservation manifested by a series of lies and cover-up and by a total failure of leadership. It was obvious to everyone that you and your organization, NIH, had a lot to lose if the American people were to discover that COVID-19 was most likely leaked from a lab in Wuhan, China, and that you via EcoHealth Alliance and Peter Daszak actually funded this research, and that this lab was actively and recklessly conducting gain-of-function research. As such, you did everything in your power to deflect and cover up this possibility. You even recruited others to help you in this effort. Unfortunately, this cost our country and the world valuable time, time that may have led to answers regarding the origin, may have blunted the spread, and would have almost certainly saved lives. While I think most of us have known all along what I just described, what I have been appalled to discover through sworn testimony to this committee is the level at which you and those that worked for you went to cover up the obvious. Just a few examples, and I know these have been touched on, but they're important for everyone to hear. Dr. Lawrence Tabak, former acting director of NIH, testified that under the generic definition that NIH did in fact fund gain-of-function research. This was based on a definition that was initially used by NIH and a definition that was abandoned and removed from the website in October of 2021 and replaced by a new, much more detailed definition with a much higher bar that you have since conveniently used to define gain-of-function testing and to deny what Dr. Tabak has since confirmed. 
He also said that EcoHealth Alliance failed to properly and promptly report that their research violated the terms of the grant, something that went completely unaddressed under your watch. Dr. Morans, your senior advisor, who you have tried today to distance yourself from, but whose large volume of emails clearly demonstrate that you had a very close and personal relationship with, and who reported to you directly, has openly bragged about he, how he subverted FOIA requests. I remind you that the law requires you and your former organization to comply with Freedom of Information In our Act. study on the censorship of the Biden administration working with big tech, I want to read you a uh, WhatsApp message from Mark Zuckerberg. Can we include that the White House put pressure on us to censor the lab leak theory. So this is a communication on July 16th, 2021. Nick Clegg, Joel Kaplan, Sheryl Sandberg, Mark Zuckerberg. They're certainly feeling the pressure to downplay any lab leak theory and go with the natural origin theory. Is there a question there? There's coming. There's one's coming. Here's another email to Mark Zuckerberg. It says, subject line, COVID misinformation, Wuhan lab leak theory. In response to continued public pressure and tense conversations with the new administration, we started removing five COVID claims, including the lab leak theory. Mr. Zuckerberg responds, this seems like a good reminder that when we compromise our standards due to pressure from an administration in either direction, we often later regret it. Why was it so important the virus not have started in a lab? Wasn't so important that the virus not. We don't know. We well, know it was important to someone in the Biden administration so much so that the top people at Meta, the top people at Facebook are asking, why are we getting all this pressure to, to, to downplay the lab leak theory? And we have an email from June of the same year, June 4th. 2021 saying the same thing. It was certainly important to somebody. Well, what has that got to do with me? I'm asking you because you're the expert on the coronavirus. I'm saying why Am was the administration why was the administration so pushing not to have the lab leak theory as something that was viable? I can answer that I've kept an open mind throughout the entire You've kept process. an open mind. Dr. Fauci, open mind. Fauci, do you still support funding of the NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are entire, entirely and completely incorrect that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain of function research in the Wuhan Institute. Do they fund of Dr. Barrick? Uh, Dr. Tabak, did NIH fund gain of function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology through Echo Health? It depends on your definition of gain-of-function research. If you're speaking about the generic term, yes, we did. Dr. Tabak, did NIH fund gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology through Echo Health? It depends on your definition of gain-of-function research. If you're speaking about the generic term, yes, we did, because but this is research, the generic term, is research that goes on in many, many labs around the country. It is not regulated, and the reason it's not regulated is it poses no threat or harm to anybody. In the letter to Representatives James Comer, Republican Kentucky, Lawrence A. Tabak of the NIH cites a limited experiment that was conducted to test if spike proteins from naturally occurring bat coronaviruses circulating in China were capable of binding to the human ACE2 receptor in a mouse model. The laboratory mice infected with the modified bat virus became sicker than those infected with the unmodified bat virus. Gain of function research involves extracting viruses from animals and artificially engineering them in the laboratory to make them more transmissible or deadly to humans. A previously unpublished EcoHealth grant proposal filed with NIAID obtained by The Intercept had already exposed that 599,000 of the total grant to the Wuhan Institute of Virology was for research designed to make viruses more dangerous and or infectious. Dr. Richard Ebright, biosafety expert and professor of chemistry and chemical biology at Rutgers University, had previously rebutted Fauci's claim that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain-of-function research in the Wuhan Institute of Virology, WIV, as demonstrably false. 
Ebright told National Review that the NIH finance work at the WIV epitomizes the definition of gain-of-function research, which deals with enhanced potential pandemic pathogen PPP or those pathogens resulting from the enhanced of the transmissibility and virulence of a pathogen. This is the biggest genocide to ever occur. In April 19, 2023, Judicial Watch records did a record show funding for EcoHealth Wuhan Institute research to create corona mutants based on bat viruses from the caves of China. This was released in April 19, 2023. I have been going through it, guys. I will be putting the link for the document in the description sources. The notice of the award was issued back in 2014 during the Obama administration. Research Department of Health and Human Services and NIH, National Institute of Health. This was granted to Peter Daszak, the PhD. This was the company director of EcoHealth. Awards the amount, and this was this would be a yearly uh, portion of what they would receive. Uh, they would conduct everything that they needed. Uh, to, to move from the University of Nair, uh, North Carolina to the Wuhan Institute in China, where there would be less restrictions and less oversight to creating this mutant virus. Again, 2014, guys. As we move along, I want to take you step by step to see how the bioweapon was created, so you have a greater understanding of evidence and not just a conspiracy theory. Here's the exact funding. Inspected general hotline and everything. All of the sources that are needed to get back to where everything began. So, here you see the institution, EcoHealth Alliance. This was the company, bio, bio company that they were using to conduct the experiments. Peter Daszak, his organization and everything. East China University, all of the personnel, uh, the Chinese personnel that were going to help him out. Here's the staff, application for federal assistance, based in New York. As we move along, the project sites. Wuhan Institute of Virology. So the funding was started way back before the virus outbreak began in Wuhan. As you know, the Wuhan, the, the outbreak began in 2018, to, excuse me, 2019. And this funding was occurring in 2014. It's just despicable how they can just create this this project will examine the risk of future coronavirus emergence from wildlife using in-depth investigation across human wildlife, China molecular characterization of the host receptor binding domain genes. So here they're talking about how they're going to go into Asia and get everything they need for the interspecies transmission tests that they will be conducting. Even here in the project narrative, they said most emerging human viruses come from wildlife and these represent a significant threat to global public health and biosecurity. So the, the project seeks to understand what factors allow animal coronaviruses to evolve and jump into human population by studying virus diversity in critical group of animal bats at high risk sites emergency uh, emergence wildlife markets. So here they're already giving you the pro the project narrative of how they're going to create the virus with bats and how that could emerge from wildlife markets. Really? Now guys, remember that the Wuhan Institute is only 8 miles from the so-called market of where the, 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 the everything emerged. And in that market, it was reported that they never sold bats. So they're giving you the project narrative, the bioweapon narrative of how everything's going to play out.
right there in the narrative right there <laughs> on the beginning pages they're telling you the narrative of everything that they conducted early on in 2014 how did they know that a, that a virus was going to emerge in the wet market in 2014 because they had it planned out it's the only way I mean this is horrendous 20 million people killed it was a genocide so I want to take you step by step through each evidence so you understand that this is this is not a game this is not a game and the fact that Wuhan Institute was still getting funded during the pandemic even years after Rand Paul had to put a stop to it NIAID did not fund gain-of-function research to be conducted at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Do we know whether the Wuhan Institute of Virology does gain-of-function research? They were not approved by NIH uh, for doing gain-of-function research. Crouching. I don't expect you today to admit that you approved of NIH funding for gain-of-function research in Wuhan, but your repeated denials have worn thin and a majority of Americans, frankly, don't believe you. Even the NIH now admits that EcoHealth Alliance did perform experiments in Wuhan that created viruses not found in nature that actually did gain in lethality. The facts are clear. The NIH did fund gain-of-function research in Wuhan despite your protestations. They can deny it all they want, Fauci and his cronies, but this directive came straight from the White House, the Barack White House, to lift the pause of gain of function back in 2014, to lift it in 2017, and the NIH lift funding pause on gain of function research. Right here you can see exactly on their website that they still have up on the Department of Health and Human Services part of the NIH director website you can see when they started talking about Francis Collins another contributor to this scheme of industrial genocide and all of the frameworks to help facilitate a secure and research to protect the public sure but then that mutating with no oversight in China and moving the program over NIH admits to funding gain of function research in Wuhan says EcoHealth violated reporting requirements. Sure, of course they knew they were going to violate these. I mean, they went over to DARPA and DARPA refused their project. So they had to go over to Mr. Fauci, Mr. Fauci Deep State to get it going again. NIH corrects untruthful assertions by NIH. Director Collins and NIID Director Fauci that NIH had not gained a function of research research in Wuhan. NIH states that EcoHealth violated terms and conditions of NIH grants. Right there, there for you to see. So, it, 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 it clearly states that it was all to EcoHealth was testing if spike proteins from nor normally naturally occurring coronaviruses circulating in China were capable of binding in the human ACE2 receptor. Wow. Your own Department of Health and Human Services contradicting Fauci and saying that the grant was exactly to, to see if it could go into a human receptor. Wow. This is Richard Ebright, by the way, Board of Governors Professor of Chemistry and Chemical Biology for Rutgers University Biosafety. Wow, I mean, like, what more information you need? So you have the Barack the Demon getting the Chinese bioweapon ready as he's leaving office. Now, Dominion wasn't enough. No, the elections weren't enough. You, you needed to conduct the genocide as well as you left and and then the state department staffers new york post reports new stakes state department staffers were warned against probing covid origins oh i wonder by who i wonder by who they were they were getting told not to say these type of things 
Of course. Exactly. It's just like my YouTube channel got got ba got d deleted when I I had to restart. This is my second channel restarting this, and this is the reason why I was banned the first time. Because this type of information is not good for people to understand. The DARPA DARPA refused the project. Okay. And so the Ralph Barrick infectious disease researcher at University of North Carolina, his his ability to go ahead and uh, uh, get these receptors and the transmissibility of viruses was taken by the Chinese and facilitated into a bioweapon. I mean, this is going on and on and on. Boston University Research testing of lab-made version of COVID virus draws government scrutiny. So again, this is going all over. And now it was taken this and made into a bioweapon. And this document here, the grant that we've been talking about that was given to Peter Daszak, EcoHealth, by Fauci. On coronaviruses and try and understand their origins, you should involve the people who know the most about that. And for better or for worse, I do. He says the team did look into the leak theory during a visit with lab scientists and deemed it extremely unlikely. We met with them, we said, do you audit the lab? And they said, annually? Did you audit it after the outbreak? Yes. Was anything found? No. Do you test your staff? Yes. But no. you're just taking their word for it. Well, what else can we do? There's a limit to what you can do. And we went right up to that limit. We asked them tough questions. They weren't vetted in advance. Uh, and the answers they gave, we found to be um, believable, um, correct, and convincing. But weren't the Chinese engaged in a cover-up? They destroyed evidence, they punished scientists who were trying to give evidence on this very question of the origin. Well, that wasn't our task, to find out if China had covered up the origin issue. No, no, I know. Issue. I'm just saying, doesn't that make you wonder? We didn't see any evidence of any um, false reporting or cover-up in the work that... ...of bats across southern China, and we've now found, after, you know, six or seven years of doing this, um, over a hundred hmm. new SARS-related coronaviruses, very close to SARS. Some of them get into human cells in the lab. Um, some of them right. can cause SARS disease in humanized mouse models and are untreatable uh, with uh, therapeutic mm -hmm. monoclonals and you can't vaccinate against them with the vaccine. So these are a clear and present danger. Yeah. We've even found people with antibodies in Yunnan to SARS-related coronaviruses. So there's a human exposure. Right. We're now doing um, surveillance. We're just beginning another five years of work to look at cohorts in southern China to say, well, how frequent does this spill over? How Neurovirologists, you know all this stuff, but they, you can um, manipulate them in the lab pretty easily. It's yeah. just spike protein drives a lot of what happens with the yeah. coronavirus, uh, zoonotic risk. So you can get the sequence, you can build the protein, and we work with Ralph Barrick at UNC mm -hmm. to do this. Um, insert it into a backbone of another virus right. and do, do some work in the lab. So you can get more predictive when you find a sequence. You've got this okay. diversity. Now, the, the logical progression for vaccines is if you're going to develop a vaccine for SARS, mm -hmm. people are going to use um, you know, pandemic SARS as yeah, the, sure, sure. But let's try and insert some of these other yeah, sure. related and, and get a better vaccine. And I guess also knowledge of what's there. If you see something emerging, it give it a, a head start on making yeah. a vaccine or a therapeutic. That's true. And, and, you know, better knowledge of where they are as well. So that yeah. you, can, you can put your money into this clinics that matter. And that's one of the big things that we've been trying to push. There's a lot of... Um, the word predict or the word, you know, the um, anticipating, forecasting pandemics, it, it, it doesn't mean you can stop them. That's the problem. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so what we're trying to do is say, on a global scale, if we can show where they most likely to come from, the species they most likely to originate mm -hmm. in, the people most likely to get affected, a, a global actor like WHO or a national uh, government can better allocate resources to the highest risk. It's okay. pretty happen 
And is it associated? David Danzig was in charge of Eco Health Alliance, which was doing gain of function research in Wuhan, China. He was doing dangerous gain of function research. He didn't adhere to the rules of the grant. Uh, when they had a, a, a dangerous virus created in and, and, uh, their fifth year of research, they didn't report it to NIH. Dr. Peter Danzig should never get another penny from the U.S. government for any type of research, nor should Eco Health Alliance. And then that has been brought out and actually was very much a witness. And is it, through a FOIA request, the State Department put out a classified document, but they redacted everything but the headers. Uh, and the headers indicate that there is a cover up, that the CCP blocked the thorough investigation. As you said earlier, duh, right? We, we know all of this basically because we watched it in real time. But it also indicates that the PLA, the People's Liberation Army of China, has had uh, relationships with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Not a surprise there either. What so of everything request? we think we know about our leaders, our society, and our relations with the rest of the world is wrong. America is facing two major challenges. One is the Chinese Communist Party. However, the most significant threat comes from within. You're trying to obscure responsibility for four million people dying around the world. Okay. Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about. We've already seen evidence of how the elites want to run the United States. They're modeling themselves after Chinese autocracy. For over a decade, the People's Republic of China has stood publicly accused of acts of cruelty and wickedness that match the cruelty and wickedness of medieval torturers and executioners. Diane Feinstein had a Chinese spy as her driver for 20 years. We're not talking about one person infiltrating senior levels at the CIA or the White House. We're talking about an entire elite class throughout the political, corporate, academic, cultural, and media establishment. My name is Lee Smith. I've been a journalist for more than 30 years. This is the most astonishing espionage and infiltration operation in history. What you're going to see in this series will shock you. This is The Enemy Within. As we see the investigation get more gruesome into the origins of Blank 19. And the, and the investigation of the Wuhan Institute of Virology was made in August 2021 by the House Foreign Affairs Committee. The 117th Congress, Republican-led. The hypothesis of a lab leak, which honestly guys, this is a lab, not a lab leak, but a military release by the... Chinese military components and I will show you right now the evidence for that as we seek over to the page here for the executive summary so more than a year later we see more evidence we see that the installation of the People's Liberation Army bioweapons expert at the head of the WIV bio safety level 4 again that's the Wuhan laboratory and who is that but we have two of them in coordination Mr. Colonel Kao Wuchang and Major General Chen Wei China's top biodefense expert also you could say offensive bioweapons in this in this matter this is a, a exclusive reporting by dailymail.com back in I had to keep it around in my archives because it was back in April 2021 but everything's coming out now worrying new clues about the origins of COVID how Scientists at the Wuhan lab helped scientists army and secret project to find animal viruses. Which animal was it? Of course, we know that it was the bat virus that Xi Jinping was 
understanding for more than 20 years in the back caves of Wuhan. And uh, who did she, she give that information from Ralph Barrick from University of North Carolina to? Yep, you see right there. The epidemiologists that were sent for this situation. Now, uh, yet Cal is listed on the project reports as a researcher from the Academy of Medical Military Medical Sciences of the People's Liberation Army works closely with other military scientists and is director of the Military Biosafety Expert Committee. Wow! Cal, uh, an epidemiologist who studied at Cambridge University, even sits on the Wuhan Institute of Virology. So the actual laboratory that got the gain-of-function research for the cleavage site of the, of the University of Carolina that information was given to the military biodefense expert of China. Wow, the, the State Department raised questions. Yes, we know that. They told Fauci, you can't do this. They, 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 they stopped, that they made the pause, and who, who, who unpaused it? Of course. It's amazing that thing that you can unpause something and millions of people die. And it was done by this here. I'm not going to say the name. But you can see right here. By this White House right here. And the demon himself. That's all it took is on pausing. That had started back in 2014. This order right here. Murdered. And it was given to our enemy. Just like that. China was preparing for a third world war. With biological weapons. Including coronaviruses. Six years ago according to dossier produced by the people's liberation army in 2015 so at the same time that we were making the gain of function in 2014 and transferring everything over to the wuhan the liberation army was already taking control of this program and i and i, and I, I that's why kyle was sitting in the in the in the chair you know he, he he was he was on the board of the Wuhan and now comes in the other um the other lady aside from the bat lady you have general chen wei takes over the actual laboratory so you have him being there on the board and then once that once the pandemic happens she comes in and takes over and what happens becomes the people's hero makes her the vaccine for Wuhan the first vaccine in the world Wow how did you get it so fast oh that's right because you made the virus and yet this is the people's hero that's how the Chinese are programmed to say that this woman, these people are heroes because they created a vaccine faster than, faster than, 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 than the world. But they murdered so many. And the propaganda saying that these people, are, that these murderers are, are heroes is happening in China. The Chinese people don't even realize, they probably believe it. That was the production, the transferring of bioweapon, offensive weapons, all pay U.S. taxpayer, Fauci, NIH, Ralph Barrick. Ralph Barrick, your work was used by General Chen Wei and Mr. Cao to murder Americans as they created the, the, the vaccines for their own people. And then they, they were told to hear, they were, they were the heroes, even though they were the major components of creating the bioweapon for the world. Wow, all because of a White House order by another communist entity sitting in the White House who I shall not name the demon himself, Brock. That name itself is a demonic entity. Look at this, the Australian virus warfare in China military documents. Chinese military scientists discussed the bio -wep weaponization of SARS coronaviruses five years before the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the same time that... That we were, we were, our institutions were, were doing that. The installation of the People's Liberation Army bioweapons expert at the head of the 
Wuhan Institute of Virology. Yep, yep. Actions by the Chinese Communist Party. Genetic modification. The report also lays out ample evidence that the researchers at the WIV, that the con uh, conjunction of U.S. scientists and funded by both PRC government and the U.S. government were conducting gain-of-function research and on coronaviruses. Yep, yep. Chimeric viruses, the cover-up. So, the, you know, the, 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 we know. Our own government knows everything that's going on. And as we, we jump over here, uh, and I will be, this, this documentation is put on on the video below in the description if you want to go ahead and read, read all of it. But this is the evidence, Odyssey Media, Nika Drems, evidence of lab leak. Again, it's not a lab leak. This was a military coordinated re release by a bioweapons def defensive, not defensive, but offensive Chinese weapons. Yes, here the center of Wuhan, Dr. Xi Jinping. Lei, as we saw late earlier, the Bat Lady coordinated with the um, with the general herself. Both both ladies. Um, oh, what's smiling, smiling Chinese ladies? It's just just giving giving us bio weapons for the world. Thank you so much. Uh, gain of function, you should, and then and then they're praised in their home country because the communist propaganda is so strong that they believe that these these creators of bioweapons are are their own heroes because they of course you're gonna have the the the, the vaccine you made the virus of course you you have you've isolated it already and you know all of the researchers that were involved there <sighs> bio this is why I call it a biogenocide so as we go to to the most important part of the page of the foreign affairs documentations of origins blank 19 all of our work regarding the different types of coronaviruses particle sequences of full-length genome sequences and have been published and gen bank so this is talking about how the new leadership and pla involvement how um how the uh, the, the the Wuhan Institute we erased all the databases and and then put all the officials were dispatched back in 2020 to assume control of the response but you gotta understand that Kyle was already on the board he was already control of the Wuhan Institute she just came in for the public face for the hero for the public for the for the public uh, uh, propaganda for for the world oh we're here we're here to just just to see what happened at the lab no you already had somebody on the board control of it Mr. Kyle as I showed you before on the uh, Daily Mail. And uh, yes, the report says the PLA Major General Chen Wei, as seen here with the, uh, the dictator, uh, uh, an expert in bio bio biology and chemical bioweapon bio offense, I call it offense because that's what it was, not defense, was deployed in Wuhan and took control of the Wuhan BSL-4 lab. So again, this is the same. Th this is more. This is a world massacre right here. This is a military reported massacre, uh, and we were. It, it was. It was sold out. The Chinese were already coordinated as 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 reported by the Australian back in 2015. They were preparing for bio warfare against the United States, and we pretty much gave it to them with this order, with big by but by, by the communist entity in the White House. And, um, and of course, uh, you know, the Biden White House was, was pretty much the Barack White House as well. So that was pretty much just a continuation of, of giving um, the communist everything. So uh, this, this is it. Your taxpayer money was given to uh, bioweapons and the enemy, uh, all funded by Fauci, the Bat Lady, the Dazak, Francis, the, uh, the, the head, the, the head. Aji, uh, the dictator, uh, Barack. So these people are all are all involved in making bioweapon uh, against the, the world. And um, these are the words and the things that cannot be said. Uh, given to you by Odyssey Media. This is the biggest reporting in the 20th, 21st century. Uh, I don't think that there's a bigger massacre in the world history as as what we have seen here. It was all coordinated, uh, and. Uh, not only do they need to be arrested but they they need to be interrogated as to why they gave it to our enemy why 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 would fauci and all these people knowingly give these entities that that were already i mean you, <laughs> being military coordinated so this is all very sick but it has to be shown for the public and i hope that it can be magnified because we have already been at war 
and we have been, as I call it, bio weapon veterans. Odyssey Media, as I showed you the reporting, this is gruesome stuff either so we've requested that they declassify but you know i also serve on the intelligence committee and i'm chairman of oversight and so we hopefully will at least be able to see these documents fully in in that setting and you know you mentioned what, what dr fauci said he goes ccp will not tolerate any misinformation well they won't tolerate any information except for their very much misinformation but let, let me share quickly that the headlines that we found in this document uh, you know, they said the outbreak could have been contained if Beijing had not covered it up. The President Xi lied to obfuscate his role in the cover-up. That the PLA had contractors building the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and the PLA was still present after it was built. And we have cyber evidence that shows that the PLA had shadow labs inside the Wuhan Institute of Virology and uh, their engineering university. So it's all adding up. We need the documents. Go health by Fauci and then move from North Carolina to Wuhan is the evidence that we need to show the grand scheme of everything because there is more evidence. There's, 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 you can provide all of these documents in the court of law. Kim.com, in case you still had doubts at the origin of COVID-19, read this. Thanks to Rez Tom for sharing these documents. More to come. U.S. government fund to gain research at Wuhan lab in China created COVID-19 and killed millions. This is why the media is not reporting about this. So uh, there's, this document has been going around a lot, pretty much around everywhere. It says, an American created recombinant bat vaccine or it's Precursor viruses was created by an EcoHealth Alliance program at the Wuhan Institute of Virology (WIV), as suggested by the reporting surrounding the lab hypothesis. The details of this program have been concealed since the pandemic began. The details can be found in the EcoHealth Alliance proposal response to the DARPA preempt uh, pre preempt project program bro pro agency announcements (BAA). Dated March 2018, a document not yet publicly disclosed. The contents of this program are, are essentially detailed. Peter Daszak laid out a step-by-step -step organist and tends to do with the by, by face and by location. The, the scientists involved, the roles and their institutions are indicated. The funding planned for the WIV work on its own document, the reasons why non-pharmaceutical inventions like masks and medical countermeasures like mRNA vaccines do not work well can be extrapolated from the details the reasons why the early treatments protocols work as curative are apparent SARS-CoV-2 a form of it emerged a is likely a precursor deliberate virulent humanized recombinant SARS CoV that was a reverse engineered into a live attenuated SARS CoV bat vaccine. It nature can be determined from analysis of its genome with the context provided by the EcoHealth Alliance proposal joining this analysis with US intelligence collections on Wuhan will aid this determination. This comes all the way from the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. So, so when they try to go to DARPA, one of the commandants of the Marine Corps says and, and looks at this proposal and is like, are you crazy? And this is why he had to go to Fauci instead of the military for this bioweapon research. This is what, that's what it was called. And, um... And the fact that Judicial Watch got the document of the funding, this is right here, is what should lead him to prison. Because genocide was committed with American taxpayer money. And everybody knew. Everybody knew. Aid that project. They needed an opportunity. In 2012, Aid that project began investigating, developing gene encoded vax jabs. A new category of preventive measures of DNA and RNA. This has been going on since 2012. The DARPA's been already going, knowing on about this 
the uh, genome and DNA manipulation. So, look at this. Moderna subsequently used company funding to conduct the phase one critical trial 22 healthy workers and coded mRNA encoded again this goes in your DNA and I have previous videos showing you that it goes in your DNA and by March 2020 they were already using government funding to preemptively to preemptively try and stop a virus already being funded by them in 2017 2018 they were already creating the virus early on than that and um, yeah this is what you got going on so they created the virus and they created the mRNA to go in your actual DNA uh, to create the protein that they created the protein that Ralph Barrick had to created the, pro the protein that, that he gave to the Chinese so they could have that protein to create the virus and now we and now what you have here mRNA I mean this is this is a whole circle we're coming we're coming around in a circle now where you know the government itself is creating this using our enemies to create it and then using technology that is supposed to prevent it but it doesn't so what what exactly went into people's dna and what what was the purpose if not if not to prevent something they created and this is all is old documents this this here you know it's it's talking about 2014 talking about moderna 2020 using funds that they had learned from 2012 i mean the fbi director says covid pandemic most likely originated from a chinese lab so now everything is coming out and you have to understand if a government is able to the FBI has for a quite some time now assessed that the origins of the pandemic are most likely a potential lab incident in Wuhan Let me step back for a second you know the FBI has folks agents professionals analysts virologists, microbiologists, etc., who focus specifically on the dangers of biological threats, which include things like novel viruses like COVID, uh, and the concerns that they're in the wrong hands, some bad guys, a hostile nation state, a terrorist, a criminal, uh, the threats that those, those could pose. So here you're talking about a potential leak from a Chinese government controlled lab that killed millions of Americans and that's precisely what that capability uh, was designed for. What new assessment from the head of the FBI about the origins of COVID-19, deepening the debate this morning over what triggered the global pandemic. The FBI has for a quite some time now assessed that the origins of the pandemic are most likely a potential lab incident. The FBI's agents, analysts, and biological threat experts assessing that a lab in Wuhan, China was the virus's likely source. The Chinese government denies that, but FBI Director Chris Wray says they've tried to hide evidence from the world. The observation that the Chinese government seems to me has been doing its best to try to thwart and obfuscate uh, the work here, the work that we're doing. Ray's comments coming just days after news broke that the U.S. Department of Energy also concluded with low confidence that the virus, which has killed more than 1.1 million Americans, had likely originated from a laboratory leak and described it as an accident. Other U.S. agencies believe the virus emerged naturally, a view which had been the mainstream scientific consensus for much of the pandemic. The evidence strongly points to this being a natural occurrence of a jumping of a virus from a bat to an animal species to human. The renewed debate over the pandemic. This and give you the same solution, and that solution is not the solution. It's a double-sided punch. That's heavy. And I've shown you the evidence, the documents, the creation, the funding, the step-by-steps, the key players, the receipts. So, question and connect. Now you understand why things are banned. 
so get ready because it's only gonna get way more heated now as the truth unveils the darkness gets angry odyssey media nicodremus despite your protestations you can deny it all you want but even the chinese authors of the paper in their paper admit that viruses not found in nature were created and yes they gained in infectivity your persistent denials though are not simply a stain on your reputation but are a clear and present danger to the country and to the world as professor kevin esfeld of mit has written gain of function research looks like a gamble that civilization can't afford to risk and yet here we are again with you steadfast in your denials why does it matter because gain-of-function research with laboratory-created viruses not found in nature could cause a pandemic even worse the next time. We're suffering today from one that has a mortality of approximately 1%. They're experimenting with viruses that have mortalities of between 15 and 50%. Yes, our civilization could be at risk from one of these viruses. Experiments that combine unknown viruses with known pandemic-causing viruses are incredibly risky. Experiments that combine unknown viruses with coronaviruses that have as much as 50% mortality could endanger civilization as we know it. And here you sit, unwilling to accept any responsibility for the current pandemic and unwilling to take any steps to prevent gain-of-function research from possibly unleashing an even more deadly virus. You mislead the public by saying that the published viruses could not be COVID. Well, exactly no one is alleging that. No one is alleging that the published viruses by the Chinese are COVID. What we are This is a step-by-step -step indictment into the plans of a generated genocide. Specific AIM-2 receptor evolution, host range and predictive modeling of bat cove emergence risk. Oh, the risk of what they were doing. Specifically here, it says we will use a mathematical matrix modeling to investigate bad cove transmission and evolutionary dynamics and test the potential of, potential of novel coves to infect humans, bats, and other market animals. This model will be informed by serological data, market surveys, and receptor binding data from bat cell line and humanized mouse inoculation study so there you go there you go the steps on the inoculated humanized mice with the bat viruses that they accumulated from more than a thousand species around china and they did an evolutionary mutant cell line i mean this is <laughs> you gotta get angry folks because this is 2014 the grant notice from the NIH that I'm reading to you guys. It's so wild that we get a detailed funding of how taxpayer money paid for this bioweapon. Twenty million document, twenty million dead and counting. The funding an award of in 2020 in 2014 of understanding the risk of bat coronavirus emergence which is really just them creating it i mean these people should be in jail so let's look at another suspect here mr peter dazak we should have already been uh interrog interrogation and, and arrested um he uh was the pr he's the president and chief scientist of EcoHealth. He says the goal of the proposed research is to investigate the ecology, evolutionary, biology, and transmission dynamics of bat coronaviruses at the human wildlife interface. Specifically, we will conduct field studies in China to obtain high qualitable samples from bats. Well, I'm sure you will, man. That was 20 million deaths and counting, by the way. And identify, characterize, and isolate known novel coronaviruses. Will analyze the patterns of coronavirus transmission among bats and other wildlife, and the risk of spillover to humans. I have been working on the dynamics of emerging viral diseases from wildlife for 15 years, and have the proven. Is that this was risky type of research, gain-of-function research? It was risky to share this with the.
with the Chinese and that COVID may have been created from a not yet revealed virus. We don't anticipate the Chinese are going to reveal the virus if it came from their lab. You know that, but you continue to mislead. You continue to support NIH money going to Wuhan. You continue to say you trust the Chinese scientist. You appear to have learned nothing from this pandemic. Will you today finally take some responsibility for funding gain-of-function research in Wuhan? Senator, with all due respect, I disagree with so many of the things that you've said. Gain, first of all, gain-of-function is a very nebulous term. We have spent, not us, but outside bodies, a considerable amount of effort to give a more precise definition to the type of research that is of concern that might lead to a dangerous situation. You are aware of that. That is called P3CO. We're aware that you deleted gain of function from the NIH well, website. Well, I can get back to that in a moment if we have time, but let's get back to the operating framework and guide rails of which we operate under. And you have ignored them. The guidelines are very, very clear that you have to be dealing with a pathogen that clearly is shown and very likely to be highly transmissible in an uncontrollable way in humans and to have a high degree of morbidity and mortality and that you do experiments to enhance that. Hence the word EPPP, -P -P, enhanced pathogens of potemic, potemic, potential So when EcoHealth Alliance took the now, virus, well, SHC014, and combined it with WIV1 and caused a recombinant virus that doesn't exist in nature, and it made mice sicker, mice that had humanized cells, you're saying that that's not gain-of-function research? According to the framework and guidelines... So what you're doing P3, is defining away gain-of-function. No. You're simply saying it doesn't exist because you changed the definition on the NIH website. This is terrible, and you're, you're completely trying to escape right. the idea that we should do something about trying to prevent a pandemic from leaking from a lab. There's, the preponderance of evidence now points towards this coming from the lab, and what you've done is changed the definition right. on your website to try to cover your ass, basically. That's what you've done. You've changed the website to try to have a new definition that doesn't include the risky research that's going on. Until you admit that it's risky, we're not going to get anywhere. You have to admit that this research was risky. The NIH has now rebuked them. Your own agency has rebuked them. But that's, the thing is, is you're still unwilling to admit that they gained in function when they say they became sicker. They gained in lethality. It's a new right. virus. That's not gain of function. According to the definition that is currently <laughs> operable, you know, Senator, the new let's make it clear for the people who are listening. The current definition. You don't have to be an investigator. Specific game two, receptor evolution. Oh, let's see how the gain of function of the bat virus genocide began. Cove host range in bats and other mammals is limited in cellogenetic readiness of bats and evolutionary conserv conservation reception receptors. Host range is limited by geographic and ecological opportunity and contact between species. So right there they're giving you the what could happen but we know that that's not what actually happened. We will ima examine co-evolutionary congruence of bat co COVID covids at their host using both function receptor and neural ecological psychological traits so i'm going to go ahead and skip uh, skip here a little bit so here in this part here they talk about selection in the markets versus wildlife samples they'll compose mathematical models to predict the evolutionary transmission dynamics so again they're going to infect mice and see how these bat viruses emerge and evolve into being gain of function transmitted to human beings <laughs> if you want to simplify it specific aim three which is really guys specific aim three is the damning of why these individuals should be arrested tried and possibly more okay and the conspirators who created this virus and gave it to the communist Chinese to be created as a bioweapon. Specific aim three, testing predictions of the COVID interspecies transmissions. Oh, 
Are you going to do transmissions of interspecies? We will test our models of host range, experimentally using reverse genetic pseudoviruses of receptor binding assays and virus infection experiments in cell culture in humanized mice with bat coves that were isolated or sequenced and using live virus or pseudovirus infection in cells in different origins or expressing different receptor molecules we will assess potential for each isolated virus those with receptor binding site sequence to spill over oh wow we will do this by sequencing the spike which was the same spike covered in in, in, in the virus that we had or the receptor binding fusion protein genes from the from all of our coves creating mutants to identify how sick i mean they're telling you right there guys there you go arrest them right here gain of function creating mutants creating mutant bat viruses in 2020 giving it to the chinese which their own air force pla talked about using bioweapons against the united states <laughs> we created the bioweapon <laughs> okay so fauci created the bioweapon to identify how significantly each would need to evolve to use ACE2 receptors, uh, DPP4, CD26, merge cove receptor, and other potential cove receptors. So there, they're already finding all of the different ways to get into the human body. We will then use receptor mutant pseudovirus binding assays. Oh my gosh. In vitro studies in bat prime human and other species li cell lines and with humanized mice where particularly interesting viruses are identified silogenetically or isolated. These tests will provide public health relevant data and also iterate, improve or pr predictive model to better target bat species coves during our field studies to obtain backhoof strains of the greatest interest for understanding the mechanisms of cross species transmission. So they're telling you that they have to create mutant bat viruses in their labs that are unre unre unregulated in a, in a level four a lab there ran by the Chinese, which was later taken over by the military Chinese once, once the spill happened. And what did they blame it on? The markets. You think a co you think a mutant bat, bat virus is going to be created just because they ate some bats at a market? Huh? Those take hundreds of years. Okay? Something would have already happened. So what I'm trying to say is that market was only eight miles away from the Wuhan lab. So they already had all of the precedent. They already had the story given to you. And at the same time, they're telling you they have to create the create the mutant viruses to better understand how it would happen in the future really so they're this is crazy was done over a two to three year period by outside bodies including the nsabb two conferences by the national academy of science engineering and medicine on december 2014 March 2016, we commissioned external risk benefit assessment. And then on January of 2017, the Office of Science and Technology Policy of the White House issued the current policy. And coincidentally, I, I have coincidentally, not changed the definition any appeared definition. on the same day the NIH said that yes, there was a gain of function in Wuhan, the same day the definition appeared, the new definition, to try to define away what's going on in Wuhan. Until you accept it, until you expect accept responsibility, we're not going to get anywhere right. close to trying to prevent another lab leak of this dangerous sort of experiment. You won't admit well. that it's dangerous, and for that lack of judgment, I think it's time that you resign. Thank you, Senator Paul, and I would like um, to give the time to Dr. Fauci. Yeah, well, there were so many things that are egregious misrepresentation here, uh, Madam Chair, that I, I don't think I'd be able to refute all of them, but just a couple of them for the listens to hear for. You have said that I am unwilling to take any responsibility for the current pandemic. I have no responsibility for the current pandemic. The current pandemic, okay? Number two, you said the overwhelming amount of evidence indicates that's a lab leak. I believe most card-carrying viral phy phylogenists and molecular virologists would disagree with you that it's much more likely, even though we leave open all possibilities, it's much more likely that this was a natural occurrence. Third, 
You say we We've can tested 80,000 animals and no Senator animals have been Paul, found with COVID. Senator Paul, the time is to first. And Back third, you made a statement just a moment ago that's completely incorrect, where you say we continue to support research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. You proved it in August of last year. No, no, your statement says, quote, I wrote it down as you were writing. You continue to support research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. You were in committee a month ago Which and said you Senator still Paul, trust you the Chinese scientists and you still support the research over there. You said it a month ago Senator in committee. Senator Paul, I have allowed Dr. Fauci to respond. You've had your time. I'm going to give him He's going to be dishonest. Minute. He ought to be challenged. S Senator Paul, we will allow Dr. Fauci to respond after you've given accusations like that. Dr. Fauci. Well, I don't have any more to say except to say that, as usual, and I've, I have a great deal of respect for this body of the Senate, and it makes me very uncomfortable to have to say something, but he is egregiously incorrect in what he says. Thank you. Thank History you. will figure that out on its own. We will turn to Senator Hassan. Thank you. Let's keep understanding the risk back coronavirus emergence grant notice, the document that paid for COVID, not I can't even say the full word right because I don't want to get dinged here. Uh, but all I see is in this document is bats, probes, emergence, virality, zoonotic, reservoirs of bats, wildlife markets, hotspot China. I mean, what more proof do you need for the zoonotic bat origin? I'm highlighting these words for you, by the way. You can read this document for yourself and see how a, bi a bioweapon was created. This document itself could go to all the way to a court and indict people for mass genocide. It's crazy that someone like me has to go through the evidence of what lawyers and massive special counsel jury grand jury should be reviewing right now and publicizing to the whole world figure by figure species by species spli splicing the all of the ace 2 receptors enzymes to get beta coronaviruses it's insane guys this is the type of evidence that odyssey media brings to you okay if you want to support actual evidence that brings forth the light of real conspiracies you have it here for modeling risk of human infection mathematical models to see how we can infect ace this protein into mouses all of the receptors and all of the ways on how to do it for the pseudo virus essays Human infecting coves. <laughs> it keeps going on and on about infection and human modeling risks. This is what understanding risk back coronavirus COVID 19. Okay? So don't say I don't bring the receipts for the world genocide that has occurred in the bioweb. I want you to understand that this was 2014. This document that I'm reading to you is 2014. Okay. Increase evolutionary opportunity. Interspecies transmission. Okay. ACE2 human receptors to humans. We will compare across all of the China wildlife. This is how a bioweapon was created. We have to be more serious about the evidence being put it for in front of us. Interspecies COVID bat transmission over a thousand bat individuals. So this was all happening in 2014. How the, how the transmission to human receptors would be from all of the different bats. This is how it was all created, right in front of your face, for everybody to understand and, 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 and look at. Different areas of China, different wildlife markets, this is a step-by-step -step indictment 
into the plans of a generated genocide. Specific aim 2, receptor evolution, host range and predictive modeling of bad cove emergence risk. Oh, the risk of what they were doing. Specifically here it says, we will use a mathematical matrix modeling to investigate bad cove transmission and evolutionary dynamics and test the potential of, potential of novel coves to infect humans, bats, and other market animals. This model will be informed by serological data market surveys and receptor binding data from bat cell line and humanized mouse inoculation studies. So there you go. There you go. The steps on the inoculated humanized mice with the bat viruses that they accumulated from more than a thousand species around China. And they did an evolutionary mutant cell line i mean this is <laughs> you gotta get angry folks because this is 2014 the grant notice from an nih that i'm reading to you guys it's so wild that we get a detailed funding of how taxpayer money paid for this bioweapon The conspiracy goes farther than China because there has to be elements within the government here and the institutions that were planning this because not only was that given to China, but you had the medical industry the of the jabs of Pfizer and Moderna also creating this technology to, to supposedly go against it. And yet they somehow found the, the spike protein at the same time that if the virus came out and they had that warp speed they had everything ready as they, they were already creating this mRNA jabs back in 2016 I have the documentation to show that so as they're creating the mRNA technology to supposedly fight that which goes into your I can't even say that on this they also at the same time are creating this bioweapon so th th this was directed not just by the chinese the chinese were given this this goes higher than fauci this is why he must be arrested that's why these people must be put up in front of court as mass murderers because if they get away with it then the people that were directing them above will continue to do their mass murder and the next time the mass murder happens it will be greater than 20 plus million in county so it's up to you everybody and you must subscribe you must get the word out you must put out the video because nobody is given a timeline of the creation with the evidence right up front to your face only honestly media Nico Dram is here. It's put, putting that out here. So you, 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 everybody's living their lives while monsters are murdering. And I'm not just talking about Fauci for Francis, Barack the Demon, the Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping. No. They are all part of the people above them. As you have seen my channel, again, this report, this evidence is brought to you by Odyssey Media. They must be arrested. The people must rise up. You have to do it now or next time. We may not even be here. Notice of award issue date, the 27th of May, 2014 National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases Grant Number 1R1011964-01 Fane, R0101964 Principal Elm Investigators, Peter Dasak, PhD Project Title, Understanding the Risk of Bat Coronavirus Emergence Alexei President for 60 West 34th Street 17th Floor New York, New York 1002317 Award Email to B6 Budget Period, the 6th of January 2014 to the 31st of May 2015 Project Period, the 6th of January 2014, 0531. 2019 Dear Business Official, the National Institutes of Health hereby awards a grant in the amount of $666,442, see, award calculation, in Section I and, terms and conditions, in Section 111, to Echo Health Alliance, Inc. In support of the above referenced project. This award is pursuant to the authority of 42 U.S.C. 241-42 CFR 52 and is subject to the requirements of this statute and regulation and of other referenced. Incorporated.
or attach terms and conditions. Acceptance of These dark builders intend to release a string of man-made bioweapons plagues, each one worse than the last, while at the same time expanding the police state to enforce an orderly extermination of the population, all in the name of fighting invisible terrorists. The elite and the who Georgia occupy guy. the commanding heights of digital reality are suicidal nihilists. Suicidal nihilists know that there is no longer any substantive purpose to their willing, but they would always prefer to go on willing than not to act at all. They can very happily ally themselves with a the notion of nuclear holocaust or perfect exterminism. Technology has become so powerful in its capacity for destruction that free humanity cannot afford to let psychopathic technocrats with delusions of grandeur repeat the mistakes of their forebears, because it is highly probable that this time they may destroy everything, including themselves in their mad rush for godhood. In the days of World War II, there were sovereign nations and armies to stand against Hitler's final solution. Once world government is in place, no one will be able to stop the New World Order's plans for global population reduction. For those immune to psychological programming, hundreds of FEMA camps have already been built throughout the United States. In their quest for population reduction, no method is off the table. These dark buildings. Aldous Huxley, author of Brave New World and brother of Julian Huxley, gave a speech at Berkeley in 1962, shortly before his death. He admitted that his best-selling book, Brave New World, written in 1932, was based not on fiction, but on what the elite were actually planning to implement. And here I would like uh, briefly to, uh, to compare uh, the parable of Brave New World with uh, another parable which was put forth more recently, uh, in uh, George Orwell's book, 1984. I'm inclined to think that uh, the scientific dictatorships of the future, and I think there are going to be scientific dictatorships in many parts of the world, will be probably a good deal nearer to the Brave New World pattern uh, than to the uh, 1984 pattern. They will be a good deal nearer, not because of any humanitarian qualms in the scientific dictators, but simply because the Brave New World pattern is probably a good deal more efficient than the other. But if you can uh, get people to consent to the state of affairs in which they are living, the state of servitude, the state of being, well, it seems to me that the, the nature of the ultimate revolution with which we are now faced is precisely this, uh, that we are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which uh, will enable the controlling oligarchy who have always existed and presumably always will exist uh, to get people actually to love their servitude. Uh, people can be made to enjoy a state of affairs which by any decent standard they ought not to enjoy. And uh, these uh, methods, I, I think, are a real refinement on the older methods of terror because they combine methods of terror with methods uh, of uh, acceptance. But then there are, there are various other methods which one can think of. Uh, there is, for example, the uh, pharmacological method. This, this was one of the things I, I talked about in, in Brave New World. Uh, and. Uh, the result would be that, uh, um, I mean, you can imagine a, a euphoric which would make people thoroughly happy even in the most abominable circumstances. I mean, they, these things are possible. The elite have left a massive wave of destruction behind them as they cold-bloodedly experiment on civilian populations as if we are lab rats. A string of congressional investigations has uncovered more than 20,000 secret tests that were carried out against the American people between 1910 and 2000. 
One well-known eugenic study, the Tuskegee Syphilis Project, killed hundreds of blacks and spanned 40 years until whistleblowers exposed it in 1972. From 1943 until present, the British have tested lethal nerve gas on their own personnel on land, air, and sea. Many died instantly. Still others died grueling deaths over several years. The federal government commissioned secret radiation experiments on thousands of non-consenting patients. Hundreds of hospitals in the U.S. injected healthy men, women, and children with uranium and plutonium at dosage levels ranging from non-therapeutic to lethal, killing many of the test subjects. Pregnant wives of GIs were given vitamins by base doctors that actually consisted of highly radioactive uranium-239 and plutonium-241, resulting in violent miscarriages and the death of the mothers. Soldiers, sailors, and marines were used as guinea pigs in hundreds of atomic and hydrogen bomb tests. Patriotic Americans were radiated side by side with lab animals. Pilots were forced to repeatedly fly through mushroom clouds of DNA-destroying radiation. 